M S W Media. Hey everybody, this episode is brought to you by Jiminy's, maker of sustainable dog food and treats made with cricket protein that's better for the environment, uses less land and water to produce, and is delicious. Cricket protein is a superfood that's amazingly delicious, nutritious, and easy to digest for dogs. And you can save 25% on your first purchase when you go to Jiminy's.com slash DailyBeans25 and use code DailyBeans25 at checkout. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Thursday, June 30th, 2022. Today, the January 6th committee has subpoenaed former White House counsel Pat Cipollone. Ginny Thomas changes her mind about not being afraid to testify to the 1-6 committee. Justice Breyer is set to be relieved by Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson today. R. Kelly has been sentenced to 30 years in prison. And Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony is having a reverberating effect in Washington. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. So Dana might be a little confused about the changes in the script last minute (laughs) because there is now breaking news that uh, the one six committee has decided to subpoena the former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone. And this is a very big deal because there are going to be quite a few privilege concerns with regards to his subpoena and his testimony specifically. Now, he already sat with the committee informally. And let me just read to you the letter that they wrote to him. They said, Dear Patsy Baloney, which is what I call him now, <laughs> pursuant to the authority set forth in the House resolution, etc., we hereby transmit a subpoena that compels you to appear for a deposition on July 6th. The select committee is investigating the facts, circumstances, and causes of the attack and issues relating to the peaceful transfer of power in order to identify and evaluate lessons learned and recommend to the House and its relevant committees corrective laws, policies, procedures, rules, and regulations. The inquiry also includes an examination of former President Trump's awareness of and involvement in activities undertaken to subvert the outcome of the 2020 presidential election, including the submission of fake electoral ballots to Congress and the executive branch, the attempted appointment of Jeffrey Clark as acting attorney general, and efforts to interfere with the congressional certification of the electoral results on January 6, 2021. Our investigations have revealed credible evidence that you have information concerning these and other issues <laughs> within the scope of the select committee's inquiry. Accordingly, the select committee seeks a deposition regarding these matters. You previously sat for an informal interview with the select committee on April 13th. As explained to you in that interview, the select committee reserved the right to request additional testimony from you on the record. In the weeks since, the select committee has continued to obtain evidence about which you are uniquely positioned to testify. Unfortunately, however, you've declined to cooperate with us further, including by providing on-the-record testimony. We're left with no choice but to issue you this subpoena. And a copy will be sent of the rules. Contact us at this phone number if you have any questions. Benny Thompson, chair of the committee. So that just happened. Love it, love it, love it. Another good thing happened, and uh, another son of a bitch, as I'd like to call them, is going to prison, not just Ghislaine Maxwell. We've got another one. Yeah, exactly. R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years today. Um, This is a little justice by proxy for those of us who never got to uh, get justice in our assaults. But, you know, and there's been uh, some questions about why did he get 30 years and why did uh, life in the jizz lane, Ghislaine Maxwell, only get 20? And R. Kelly was actually charged with eight counts of sex trafficking, luring minors, etc., whereas Ghislaine was charged with six. And R. Kelly was hit with a racketeering charge as well, which carries a heavier sentence. And so his sentencing guidelines were higher than hers. Hers were 17 and a half years and she got 20. So there was an upward departure from the sentencing guidelines for her. I don't know what the sentencing guidelines were for his, if he got an upward or downward departure or what the max was that he was facing. I haven't looked into it. And so that's the reason why he got 30 versus 20. Now, if we want to talk about perhaps the social reasons why he was hit with more charges, we could you know, do that at another time. But I just wanted to answer that question because I know a lot of people were asking it. But he will be going to prison likely for the rest of his life. Yes, indeed. And I'm so glad. And we have more good news before we get to the big news. 
and you want to take that one, we are going to have a new justice sitting in the Supreme Court when you hear this today. Yes. And that is so cool. And I, I, w- I was fortunate enough to see your comedy at uh, Martini's Above Fourth. Yes, that was a fun night. Yes, with Bruce and Suzanne. It was just absolutely an incredible show. And I think you opened with an announcement because she had just been confirmed and the whole place just broke out and exploded wild applause. So she um, is being sworn in today. Briar is leaving. He will no longer be one of the nine. She will. And I really hope, Dana, that we look back, that history looks back on this day, maybe 100 years from now or, or whatever, maybe 20. I don't know. History. When does history become history? 20, 30 years, something like that, a generation. And is able to talk about this as the beginning of the reformation of our court. That would be wonderful. And I hope it says we are in the hundred years of prosperity and equality in our country. And it started with on this day when Katanji Brown Jackson took her seat. That is what I'm envisioning. I'm getting a little teary thinking about it. I don't know what could happen between now and then <laughs> that would, Jeez, that would yeah. cause that to happen. I do know it starts with voting. And so that's why everybody needs to come to the Largo on August 22nd when myself and the Midas Touch guys and How We Win Steve Pearson and the How We Win podcast are going to be at the Largo live to put on a fundraiser for the How We Win Fund, which is the MSW Media and Partnership Fund for fundraising for the midterm elections where 100 percent of your donations go to the races that need it most for the country. So thank you for everyone who's donated to that so far. And we'll see you live on August 22nd. A little birdie told me Kathy Griffin might drop in. Yeah. And for those of you that are going, how come she didn't say Dana's name? Trust me, I'm incredibly disappointed that I can't be there. I will be uh, at work overseas making people laugh. Um, I'm super bummed about the date conflict, but it's going to be an incredible night. So make sure you get your tickets. You're going to be in what, Reykjavik? Where are you going to be? I'm going to be in Iceland. Yeah, yeah. I'll be in Iceland with a, b- about 300 lesbians. Um, and d- d- you know what? It, I, things could be worse. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, Iceland is green. Greenland is ice, at least for now. Uh, that's right. So it's a very, very beautiful country. And that's going to be amazing. I'm so glad. I'm jealous that you get to go to Iceland. I absolutely have been always wanted to go there. It's on my bucket list. Same, same. So I'm feeling fortunate. All right. Well, now that we're eight minutes into the A block already, how about <laughs> <laughs> how about we hit the hot notes? Hot notes. All right. First up from Hugo Lowell at The Guardian. Today, Hutchinson testified under oath that Trump was deeply angered by the fact that some of his supporters who would gather on the National Mall we're not entering the secure perimeter for the Save America rally at the Ellipse, where he was due to make remarks. It's empty. There's bald spots. I need to fill it in like my hair, my tremendous hair. Please fill it in. The supporters did not want to enter the secure perimeter, Hutchinson testified, because many were armed with knives, blades, pepper spray, bear spray. And as it later turned out, guns and did not want to surrender their weapons to the Secret Service to attend the rally. Quote, I don't fucking care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me, Trump said in in an extraordinary outburst of fury. Let my people in. They can march on the Capitol from here. Let the people in. Take the fucking mags away. Mags, magnetometers, right? Those are the things you walk through. Metal detectors for us layman. Metal detectors. There we go. The response from the former president is significant, Hugo says, for two main reasons. It makes clear that he had been informed that his supporters were carrying weapons and that he knew those armed people intended to make a non-permitted march to the Capitol. They could never get the permit to that march. Hutchinson also testified that Donald lunged at Secret Service agents in the SUV on the way back to the White House because they wouldn't take him to the Capitol. But then some Fox News guy said sources told him that somebody told him that Ornato disputes Hutchinson's testimony. But Liz Cheney seemed to be aware that Ornato, a Trump loyalist, might dispute Hutchinson's testimony. Because during the questioning, she asked Hutchinson, was Engel in the room when Ornato told you the story? Yes. Did Engel correct or disagree with Ornato's story when he told it to you? No. And did either Engel or Ornato ever tell you after the fact that that story was untrue? No. So it seems like she had some sort of an inkling that these two fucking dickbags might be like, no, it's never happened that way. That says to me that this exchange was a bait. 
It was bait to get Ornato to testify under oath about this incident since he didn't in his previous testimony to the committee. And the way we know that is one of the committee members was telling CNN today that this Cassidy Hutchinson thing was new information from her new testimony. So Ornato's old testimony didn't cover it. So let Ornato come in and testify under oath. My bet is he will not. And if he does, and it comes down to a he said, she said, Hutchinson wins that battle given Ornato's loyalties. And the fact that she did come in and testify under oath. (laughs) And that, sure, yeah. Something else I'm wondering about, besides the obvious connections between Rudy and the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, is this short bit of testimony Hutchinson gave about Meadows closing the car door on her twice, remember, while he was on the phone? Mm -hmm. For 30 minutes he did that? And she was trying to warn him about the mob approaching the Capitol. Who was he talking to? Well, his phone records would show that. Yep. And if either DOJ or the committee has those, they know who it was. Now, Meadows sued to block Verizon back in December from giving his phone records to the committee. But that doesn't mean they don't have them already. (laughs) And DOJ can get phone records, by the way, without even telling the target they're getting them. It's called Rule 2703. I also wonder about all the calls to Jim Jordan that Hutchinson mentioned in her testimony and whether that's who Meadows was on the phone with when he was in his car slamming his door on her. And then Dana, Denver Riggleman, who used to be on the committee, told CNN that Hutchinson's testimony, while incredible, is nothing compared to what the committee has and what we will hear, and that she was merely a bridge to the upcoming hearings. I mean, that would be wonderful. About what happened that day. I imagine we'll find out who Meadows was on the phone with, why the White House wanted to be alerted when Jim Jordan called, and why Meadows asked Hutchinson if the president was done speaking when she finally got to speak to him at the car. So put some beans on it. Give me the beans! They have the answers. And Raskin's going to lead those hearings, by the way. So good. And in final committee news, sources tell Punchbowl that the committee is eyeing a subpoena for Pat, Patsy, Patsy Baloney. <laughs> and that, that has been issued now. And I want to tell you why I call him now Patsy Baloney. I mean, that was so funny. <laughs> Somebody put up a wonderful thread. And Lauren Windsor's been retweeting pieces of it all day about incorrect closed captions of what they called him. And it, Patsy Baloney was my favorite. So that's what which is it should stick. It should actually stick. All right, AG, going to an attorney general representing subpoenaed members in Georgia's General Assembly. They have filed a motion with the Superior Court of Fulton County asking to quash subpoenas for at least two GOP state lawmakers to appear as witnesses in front of the special purpose grand jury investigating the former guy's efforts to overturn the election results. So the motion was filed with the Superior Court of Fulton County on Monday by Atlanta area defense attorney Don Samuel. He is acting in the capacity of legislative counsel to represent members of Georgia's state legislature who have been subpoenaed to appear as witnesses by the special purpose grand jury convened in Fulton County. I love that they keep calling it the special purpose grand jury. What's happening to my special purpose? I know. It's a very specific special purpose. It's to fucking send the last president to prison. Listed by Samuel on the court document obtained by CNN are Georgia Republican State Senator William Ligon? Ligon? I don't know. Okay, we're going to go with Ligon. Liger. It's a tiger (laughs) and a lion combined. (laughs) It's a Ligon. Uh, Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan and others, and that's in quotation marks, so there's others mentioned. As part of her investigation, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis has sought evidence on potential crimes, including solicitation of election fraud, making false statements to state and local government bodies, and conspiracy. Her investigators are also scrutinizing who? Rudy Giuliani's appearance before state lawmakers in 2020, where he peddled baseless claims of voter fraud and encouraged legislators to appoint a new slate of presidential electors. Now, the special purpose grand jury heard testimony from at least four witnesses regarding Giuliani's activities at the Georgia State House last week. So this just went down. Now, three of those witnesses were Georgia Democratic lawmakers who testified this week and were present at the state capitol when Giuliani and other Trump lawyers shared conspiracy theory-laden claims of voter fraud in December of 2020. I love that this is still going on because there's so much focus on January 6th right now, but shit's going down in Georgia. <laughs> yeah, and we don't need a fiddle contest to we do determine not. who the winner is. But I'm so glad how fucked Rudy is in this first in this investigation. 
And I just want to make clear, uh, Newsweek put out an article like a few weeks ago saying that Fonnie Willis was going to make a charging decision by today. That's false. She said in January she might make a charging decision by the middle of the year. But then she amended that in February when she found out that her special purpose grand jury couldn't be seated until May. And she said probably by the end of the year we'll make charging decisions. And as we know, we reported, I think yesterday, that Kemp, the governor, isn't even set to testify until July 25th. So I would not expect a charging decision today in that case. And a lawyer for Ginny Thomas, who we know, longtime conservative activist, wife of SCOTUS, uh, I'm going to put justice here in quotes, Clarence Thomas, oh, yeah. has told the January 6th Select Committee that he, she has, or well, the lawyer has serious concerns about any interview the panel would conduct with her. Of course you do, because she's fucked. The letter throws cold water on the prospect of a voluntary interview between Thomas and the committee, which investigators were seeking. Quote, I would also note that this has been a particularly stressful time, as the Thomases have been subjected to an avalanche of death threats and other abuse by the unprecedented assault on the conservative Supreme Court justices and their families. That's uh, Mark Paoletta in an eight-page letter to the committee, dated Tuesday and obtained by Politico. The lawyer also wrote that he needs a better justification of the committee's legislative aims before recommending Thomas, who is known as Ginny, speak to its investigators. Quote, as she has already indicated, Mrs. Thomas is eager to clear her name and is willing to appear before the committee to do so, he wrote. However, (laughs) based on my understanding of the communications that spurred the committee's request, I do not understand the need to speak with Mrs. Thomas. The lawyer noted that the committee is seeking Thomas's testimony in part because she invited John Eastman to speak to a group of activists, like-minded, civic, whatever. But, the lawyer added, such an invite was less significant than has been suggested. (laughs) An invitation from Mrs. Thomas is an invitation to speak and nothing more, he wrote. It's not an endorsement of the speaker's views, <laughs> nor is it any indication of a working relationship between the speaker and Mrs. Thomas. In fact, Mrs. Thomas often doesn't share the views of those invited leaders or activists. Mm-hmm. I always do that. I always invite uh, people to speak with me that I disagree with yeah. to back up my point. Yeah. Yeah. I always put Joe Rogan on my comedy shows. Absolutely. The lawyer also categorically denied that Thomas and Eastman discussed litigation strategy related to the Supreme Court. Cool. Well, then it's not protected by work product doctrine. (laughs) And then he said Thomas's post-election texts with then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows were entirely unremarkable. (laughs) I'm sure. A spokesperson for the select panel declined to comment because they were too busy laughing. Thomas did not immediately respond to an email (laughs) requesting comment about her lawyer's letter. All right, A.G., and this is a good news story at the end of this block. A stretch of prime Southern California beachfront real estate was returned to the descendants of its Black owners Tuesday. This is nearly a century after the parcel was taken by the city of Manhattan Beach. And I learned about this sometime this year. Manhattan Beach Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. does not belong to the city of Los Angeles. It should never have. Now, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to give the land back to the family of the owners, Charles and Willa Bruce, okay? Known as Bruce's Beach. The resort had offered Black families a place to enjoy the California life and was a labor of love for that couple. They purchased the land in 1912, okay, for $1,225, and they built several facilities, including a cafe and changing rooms. By harassment from white neighbors and the Ku Klux Klan, it tore away their dreams. The final blow came in 1924 when the city took the property through eminent domain and paid the couple a fraction of what they paid for it. The city wanted the land for a park. Uh Uh-huh, sure. Uh Uh-huh. The property, now established to be worth more than $20 million, was transferred to Los Angeles County in 1995, okay? The houses directly next to the property, they have price tags of upwards of $7 million each, A.G. Like, this is a prime real estate. It's on the, yeah, it's on the beach, man. Absolutely. Last year, Governor Newsom signed legislation that would enable the county to return the beachfront property to their descendants. So the new law was authored by Senator Steve Bradford, who sits on the state's newly formed reparations task force. Amazing. This is a quote. Mm -hmm. This is what reparations look like, said Bradford, insisting that the Mm -hmm. county has not given anything to Bruce's family, yet simply return in their stolen property. Mm, I can't wait for for them to do this to the Central Park parcel as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tuesday's vote finalized a proposal presented by Holly Mitchell. 
chair of the County Board of Supervisors, to give back the stretch of land that's now a park with a lawn and lifeguard training facility. Quote, we are not returning this land. We are giving it back to its rightful owners. <sighs> that is such a big statement. Mitchell said mm. that calling it a historic moment for our country. Mm. Now, the vote outlined plans to release the beachfront property back to the Bruce family. County officials will rent the property from the Bruce's. This is great. So county officials still need this, but the property now still belongs to the Bruce family under a 24-month lease agreement totaling $413,000 per year to maintain the facility. And this is another quote. All the terror that is still in our hearts regarding these criminal acts that were perpetrated against innocent people of our family. It's important for people to understand more so than the money that was lost. We lost our family to this. And that was family spokesperson Dwayne Yellowfeather Shepherd. Dwayne Yellowfeather Shepherd told CNN's Stephanie Elam. So this is part of the descendants of the Bruce family. And the last quote is, this is one step toward justice. That's what he added at the mm. end of his uh, statement. Mm. I love that they were like, we aren't giving it to them. We're returning what we stole. Absolutely. Ugh. Fuck yeah. Gavin Newsom, city council, LA County, go, go, go. This needs to start happening everywhere. And um, very proud of our reparations task force, looking to see what else they could do, because there, there still needs to be a lot more. Absolutely. All right, everybody, we will be right back with the good news. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, y'all, it's AG. I recently switched my dog, Olive, to a new dog food and treat brand. And if you also care about the environment and have a dog, then consider reducing your dog's carbon paw print with Jiminy's sustainable dog food and treats made from cricket protein. Jiminy's is sustainably made because cricket protein uses less water and land to produce and drastically eliminates greenhouse gas emissions versus traditional animal protein dog food. One bag of Jiminy's cricket protein treats saves 220 gallons of water versus traditional animal protein treats. And they're delicious. These treats are so good. She loves them so much. I can train with them. And if you have a dog, I know you know what that means. She loves the taste. Um, and it includes delicious, nutritious, plant-based ingredients like sweet potatoes, blueberries, peanut butter, and pumpkin. She cannot get enough. Plus, Jiminy's is easy for her to digest because cricket protein contains a fiber that is a prebiotic, which supports a healthy gut in your dog. Jiminy's is also good for dogs with food sensitivities or dogs with allergies. Insect protein is considered hypoallergenic for dogs versus other allergy-triggering proteins like beef, chicken, fish, and soy. In fact, veterinarians are using Jiminy's dog food in elimination diets to determine food allergies. To learn more and save 25% on your first purchase, go to Jiminy's.com slash Daily 25 and use code Daily 25 at checkout. That's Jiminy's like the cricket, J-I-M-I-N-Y-S dot com slash Daily 25 with code Daily 25. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news? Good news, good news. And if you have any good news or confessions or corrections or photos of your happy place or your pod pets or pets that are available for adoption in your area or show us the postcards you're writing, tell us what you're doing for the midterms, anything you want to send us at all. I, I accept Halloween photos all year. I know Dana accepts infants. Oh, I do. Give, all, all give me all the babies, people. Any frog orgies you have, send them my way. Um, and you could do that by going to dailybeanspod.com and clicking on contact. And uh, if you're brand new for some reason to the Daily Beans today, I'm not going to explain the frog orgy joke. You're just going to <laughs> you're just going to listen to old episodes. Yeah, wait. Everyone already knows I like babies. So if you're new to this show today, go look up the episode "Charismatic Mega Plastics" and enjoy your day. Oh yes. First up from Michelle, pronouns she and her. Hello, Leguminati Beans Queens. So sorry you're not feeling well, Allison. Sending you healthful vibes and warm hugs from the land down under. My good news is for Dana today. Like you, Dana, I had severe allergies that meant I couldn't have a cat. But my mom came by a tonic that might help. With red itchy eyes, aching sinuses, and nose like a tap, I said I'd try anything. It took several days before it started working, but it actually really did work. Uh, that was more than two decades ago, and I still take the tonic every morning. And I have a cat. We rescued each other. More on that another day. I don't know if this tonic works for everyone, but if you want to try it, here's the recipe. Two dessert spoons of cider vinegar, one teaspoon plus half a dessert spoon of honey in a tall glass or mug of cold water. Adjust the honey to your taste. 
You can also add a little lemon juice for taste. It would be wonderful if this worked for you too, Dana, so you could have a kitty of your own to cuddle. <laughs> oh. My pet tax is Lula. Oh. The first pick was taken the second day she arrived when she was about two and a half months old. The second was taken a couple months ago and shows off her striking markings of black and tan spots on white. Her belly is all white, but her tail has no white in it at all. Hugs for both of you. <gasps> I mean, this is a gorgeous cat. Look it. Michelle, I'm so glad that this has worked for you. Apple cider vinegar works wonders, so I'm not surprised. Maybe I'll give it it's a shot. an elixir for anything. It is. It is. All right. Jordan, pronouns he, him. Dear Beans Queens, I want to thank you for providing some hope and clarity in these chaotic times we've been living through. You give me hope that by staying active and continuing the fight, we can make a better future for each other. My wife, Robin, introduced me to your show, and I want to thank her for that. And wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday. She is the most caring person I know and the rock of our family. For Pod Pet Tax, here are our Pod Pets Madison with the spots and Layla, who's black. Plus our new addition, Evelyn, who just turned one. Look Aww. at the German Shepherd. Look at the damn baby. Oh, wait, I'm not there yet. I'm still on the down. Get there. Get there. Okay. Okay. I mean, the baby's perfect. Evelyn's perfect. Look at that little stinker. Oh, the eyes. Evelyn's eyes. Ugh. The eyebrows, too. Those are lovely. Everything. What a gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous that is child. A, that is a pr- and the little shirt with the hearts. Oh, I know. Thank you for the baby love. <gasps> and the drink in the okay. Yep. With the straw by the by the bathing suits slash bras. Amazing. Look at that. They're little peats. Okay. Next up from Christopher P. Pronouns he and him. Hi, AG and DG. I'm Christopher Potter from beautiful Oakland, California. And I wanted to share the good news of a recent four week road trip back to my roots in Missouri and Illinois. I hit 17 states, put around 6,000 miles, only keeping up with the news through checking in with the beans when I hit the road. Everywhere I went, rest stops, restaurants, hotels, marinas, bars, I met good hearted, friendly Americans. There were the overt sites of political conflict, but one-on-one, everyone was friendly, kind, and curious about a Californian with an electric car on a road trip. (laughs) (laughs) I was reminded how lovely our country and the people are, how much we agree on, and how people who don't agree can smile and listen to one another. So that's the good news to me. I was happy to be reunited with our two adopted pandemic kitties, Diego and Frisco, on my return. Love the shows. Keep fighting the good fight. Look at the boys. Yep. Diego and Frisco are adorable. Oh, arms. Hello, arms. Oh, sweet kitties. I accept. I love it. All right. I'm glad you had a good road trip. We're moving on to Mary. Mary's pronouns are she and her. My good news is that one of my friends bought a house with her partner in a town called Gill, Massachusetts. It's near the border with New Hampshire and Vermont. The house needs some work, but they're looking forward to moving in by the end of the summer. My friend's especially excited because they are blueberry bushes. There's blueberry bushes on the property. So she'll be able to make homemade blueberry jam. I also called my governor, Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, this week to thank him for signing an executive order that protects access for all women, regardless of their state of residence, to reproductive health care services in Massachusetts. And just a side note, I hope that that also extends to non-binary and trans people that are have the ability to have children. I don't know. I obviously haven't read it, but I do hope that that's the case. But either way, way to go, Charlie Baker. Yay. And way to go, blueberry bushes. Where I grew oh. up, we had blackberry bushes around nice. the lake. I know, blueberry bushes would be fun. If I didn't live in a town named after me, I would have a much larger head. <laughs> All right, finally, from Mark, pronouns he and him. Hi there, I wake up every morning with your show and really appreciate your curation of the daily headlines. Thank you, Mark. Tiny correction for you regarding Cassidy Hutchinson. She did not have chutzpah. Chutzpah is when you kill your parents and ask the court for mercy because you're an orphan. I'm not sure what the direct equivalent for inner strength in Yiddish would be, but an old Jewish guy would say she had koyach, right? Mm -hmm. Which is literally strength in Hebrew. Pet tax is Leah Katz with some of my favorite literature. (laughs) She's a seven pound, eight year old ball of love that brings great comfort, especially these, these, these days. Look at this. Oh my God. That's such a great photo. How did you even get that to happen? I know the cat is like, um, do, are you going to move the book? And then look at on the shoulders. I love it. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, definitely not chutzpah. 
So I appreciate that correction. I li- I liked it the other day when I believe it was I believe it was Jill Wine Banks that was talking about the difference between a schlemiel and a schlemazel. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I would love to have heard that conversation. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you so much for all of these. If you have anything you want to send into us, corrections, confessions, misheard song lyrics. But you know what? You know what's fun? Misheard or misrepresented closed captions. If you have any Patsy Baloney stories that you want to, that you want to send in <laughs> about hilarious closed captions, which are like misheard song lyrics, right? But for mm-hmm. TV shows and, and things like January 6th hearings, take a screenshot of it and send it into us. Do it at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. Dana. Yes. Do you have any final thoughts before we get out of here for I the day? I do not. I have no oh, final thoughts. You I know. me. I was like, I do. And I was like, yay. And you're like, nope. not. And I was like, oh. Nope. All Sadly, right. there's nothing new happening in my life right now, which is part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a roller coaster you took me on right there. Yeah. It was like up and down very, very quickly. We'll come up with something for tomorrow. And until then, everybody, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet and take care of your mental health. Oh, and vote blue over Q. I've been AG. And I've been DG. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg and Amy Carrero. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media.